Hi all, welcome back to System Vlog Sessions. In this video, I'm going to solve few constant questions and at the end of the session, I will give you some questions and you can work on that. Okay, so let's start with the first question. Write a constraint for 4-bit dynamic array in such a way that the size of the array should be in between 15 to 20 with even numbers in odd location and odd numbers in even location. So whenever they give the constraint question, it's important to understand the question first. Okay, so what they are telling, we have to create the 4-bit dynamic array. Okay, 4-bit dynamic array. So for that, I am taking 4-bit A dynamic array. Okay, and after that, we have to allocate the size for the dynamic array. So in order to allocate the size, when if they mentioned in the question, we have to allocate the size according to the question. Okay, so in the constraint, what I am doing, in, first, it is a array question, right? So we have to use the method A dot size in order to allocate the size for the array. Okay, A dot size and they have given the range right 15 to 20 so it's better to take the keyword inside whenever they mention the range and you can also take the operator such as less than or greater than symbols okay greater than operators so instead of that it's better to take the inside keyword so a dot size inside 15 down to 20 this is the first condition okay 4 bit dynamic array with the size 15 to 20 and the second condition is we have to put the even elements in the odd locations and odd elements in the even location. That means in the odd index, we have to put the even element and in the even index, we have to put the odd element. Okay. In order to do that, we have to use the for each loop because it's based on the array questions. We have to iterate through the array, right? For that, we have to take the for each loop and for each A of I, I percentile to equals to equals to one. This gives the odd value. Okay. So if you if you write like this i percentile to equals to equals to one it gives the odd value. So if i means what index? If the index is odd, then we have to put the even element. So a of i percentile to equals to equals to zero. For example, take i as one. Okay, one percentile to equals to equals to one. Yes, one percentile to equals to equals to one. Right. So if the uh, index is one, we have to put the odd element. So a of one percentile to equals to equals to zero. That means if the element is when the element divided by 2 gives the zero reminder then it is called the even element right so this is for the odd location even element and similarly else part else if i is even i percentile to equals to equals to zero when the index is divided by 2 if it gives the reminder as zero then it is the even location so in the even lo location we have to put the odd element a of i percentile to equals to equals to one so you can see the uh, you can cross check this see odd location odd element the uh, logic is same right percentile to equals to equals to one gives the odd value and percentile to equals to equals to zero gives the even value so you can use this uh, uh, anywhere okay if they ask about odd location or odd numbers generate the odd numbers generate the even numbers so in that scenario you can use this logic i percentile to equals to equals to one gives the odd number and percentile to equals to equals to zero gives the even number okay so this is uh, this is the logic and here i'm instantiating the uh, class and i'm randomizing here 10 times okay so this is the two methods you can print the values you already know still i'm telling okay dollar display so if you use the percentile p it gives the whole packet in a hexa hexa value you will get the values okay hexa format you will get the values and otherwise you, if you want the or uh, each value each array element then you can use the for each loop because it will iterate through the array so for each p dot a of i dollar rate dollar right means it it will not give the space it will not give the new line that's why in order to get the new line i'm using slash n okay so i will run the code now you know the difference between dollar weight and dollar display right so dollar display for each display it will give the new line means after one statement it will go to the next line for the next statement but in dollar rate it's not like that first statement and the next statement also without new line it will continue here only a b c d like this but if you use dollar display a then b then c d okay that's the difference that's why i'm taking another statement has slash n slash n gives the new line see here So here you can see uh, first index means zeroth index zero means even value right we are putting the odd value phi and one means odd location so zero means even value so in the odd location we are putting the value zero similarly zero one two in the second location the second location means two means even so even location 13 is odd number odd value and odd location even value okay this is um, what they have asked in the question so now we will see the second constraint so if they ask you to write the constraint for unique elements of an array that time you can use the keyword unique 
so if they specifically mentioned that without using the unique keyword that time you can go for the array okay so uh, class packet here i'm taking four bit dynamic array in constant i'm declaring the size 10 you can take any size okay a dot size equals to equals to 10 and for each a of i for each a of j i'm taking two for each statements because i'm uh, comparing the first and second element that, that means i want to compare two elements that's why i'm taking a of i and a of j you can you write another logic also okay like a of i and a of i plus one like that you can take there later but here this is the easiest okay for each a of i for each a of j if i is not equals to j a of i should be not equals to a of j that means if the indexes are different then the values also should be different okay for example if you take the same indices a of 0 a of 0 okay i and j values are same that time this condition is not going to consider only because i should be i should not equals to j right then only this condition will be considered for here if both i and j values are same then this condition is not going to consider that's why in order to satisfy this constraint i value should be different j value should be different okay so this will give you the unique values for the element so we will see in the output here i'm using the this uh, p p format okay that's why i'm getting the hexa format values f a c 9 2 d 6 8 1 4 all these values are unique right no val no two values are repeating here so all the values are unique okay so if you want to uh, use this statements you can use this by using for each loop in the last previous question we have done the same thing right for each and a slash n see it will give you the values like this 15 10 12 9 2 13 6 8 1 4 all values are mm, unique values okay so the third question is write the constraint for ascending or descending order of elements in an array here you have to write the constraint for ascending or descending order for the elements of an array okay so here you can see everything is same the class class and writing the module calling the randomized method printing the values everything is same except the logic okay when in the constant questions this is the one easiest thing you can just write the constant and everything will be same okay so try to understand how to write the constant okay constant c1 a dot size here i'm taking size as 10 and you can take anything for each a of i if i is greater than 0 if index is greater than 0 for example 1 okay so 1 is greater than 0 a of 1 should be greater than a of 1 minus 1 means a of 0 right a of 1 should be greater than a of 0 so this gives the ascending order for the elements and if you are writing the descending order this is uh, ulta case okay a of i should be less than a of i minus 1 that means if you take the value as 1 a of 1 should be less than a of 0 okay so less than and great uh, less than and greater than symbol will be interchanged for ascending and descending order okay so i will run the code Okay. So the first one is we are writing the code uh, constraint for ascending order, right? So, so small values are coming first: two, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A 10 12 16 17 this is, these are all the values are in ascending order and if you write this one now i will uncomment the constraint for descending order okay here you can see 1d 1812 fe 86531 so this is the descending order so like this you can write the logic for ascending and descending order okay so next we will see the fourth question 
So the fourth question is constraint to generate a real 10 numbers between 1.356 to 2.683. Okay, what they are telling? We have to generate the 10 real numbers. Okay, that should be between 1.356 to 2.683. So for this question, how I'm writing? I'm first writing the model. Inside the model, I'm implementing the class. Okay, you can write like this also. Class real num and rand real r num. R num is the dynamic array because I want to store, I have to uh, generate the 10 real numbers and I need to store it, right? That's why I'm taking the dynamic array and it is of real type. Why real type? Because we have to put the elements uh, in real type, real type values, right? 1.3562, 2.683. These are all the real type values. So in order to put the real type values, I'm taking the type real here. And the constant, uh, the first constant is for size because we, we need to generate the 10 real numbers. That's why I'm giving the size as 10 here. So the second constant is about range because we need to put the elements in within this range only. 1.3562, 2.683, three, okay? inside 1.356 to 2.683 and um, so here it will generate the values within this range and it will generate the size as 10 after that what i'm doing i'm taking one post randomize post randomize means after the randomize call after the randomize call it will randomize some values right so it uh, immediately go to the uh, post randomize method okay so in post randomize method i'm printing the values here you can see for each r num of i i'm iterating to the uh, R num array and here I'm displaying the elements dollar display real equals to percentile 1.3 f uh, comma R num of i why I am taking 1.3 f because f is for format specifier this is for real type values right we need to uh, display the real type values that's why I'm taking the format specifier as f and why this 1.3 because if you don't take this 1.3 I'll show you okay for example 0 f I will run the code so here you will see uh, many number of digits after the decimal, okay. See 2.3, how many integer, how many digits we are seeing? 3, 6, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 digits we are seeing. So if you write it as a 1.3, it will consider only 3 digits after the point. One is for this before decimal point. Okay, this is one. So if you have twenty one point one seven, that time you have to write two here. Okay, so this this before point, what is the what you have mentioned the value that defines the decimal values. Okay, here only one digit you have. That's why I'm writing one. So if you have two digits here, you have to write two. If you have three digits here, three dot something okay so after the point you have writing you have declared one uh, number right three because i want only three digits after the decimal point okay if you want four digits then point four if you want five point five okay so this is how you have to take the um decimal points okay so here i want only three positions after the decimal point one seven zero because they have given the uh, they have mentioned in the question right three three five six and six eight three so i need only three digits that's why i'm taking this okay now i will run the code see i'm getting only three digits right after the decimal point all are between this range only 1.3562 to 2.683 and 10 real values i'm getting here okay so this is how to write the values within this range so consider uh, so this this will be not supported in all the simulators for example if i use the synopsis and i will run the code okay it will not support for synopsis or aldec or uh, whatever cadence okay so for that how to write the constraint c i'm getting errors right because it is of real or short real or real time type support for variables of real type is disabled okay so that's why in order to support for all the simulators we have to change we have to modify it so in order how i will modify it you, you will see okay see here i will take it as a int and i will take one more variable okay this is of real type this is of int type first what i will do i will generate the random values in int int value okay int uh, int, int type values I will generate in the randomization and I will store that in the uh, real type variable okay here I am not taking any rand because it will not support for any uh, other simulators that's why I am taking the 
real num 10 okay fixed size array of real type so the constant will be same for this nothing will be changed here and size range is same in the uh, function word post randomize in post randomize method i will take num okay this this variable for each num of i begin what i will write this is my logic num of i i am assigning the uh, values how i am assigning the values to this fixed size array r num of i whatever i will generate in the randomization for this uh, int type variable int type array that i will be divided by 1000.0 okay because it will this r num of i will generate some integer type values so that integer type values i will divide by 1000 so before that what i will do i will remove these points okay so i will remove the decimal points and i just write the numbers 1356 down to 2683 so i will divide this value by 1000.0 and when i divide by 1000.0 it will give some float values it will give some real values right so that will be stored in the num array that is of real type only so both are compatible now and i am displaying the values okay here i will change it to num so this is the modified code what are all the things you need to remember just remove the points okay if it uh, for example if you have only 1.35 and 2.68 that time what you have to do divided by 100 okay here here you have to divide by 100 if it is if it has only one digit after decimal point you have to divide it by 10 okay so this is how you have to write I'm using synopsis and I'm getting the values right 1.497, 2.368, 2.387. So I will change the simulator. I'll take I'm using okay. See, I'm getting the values right. So, so if you want your code to be supported in all the simulators, you have to write this logic only. Okay, first generate the int type variables and that divide that variable by uh, 1000 or 100 by 10. Okay, based on your decimal points. So, if you are uh, using three digits after the decimal point, you have to divide by 1000. If you are using two digits after the decimal point, divide by 100. If you are using only one digit after the decimal point, divide by 10. Okay, 10.0, 100.0, 1000.0. This is how you have to write the constraint. So, this is all about today's session. And I have included a few questions here. You can solve that. Okay. So the first question is take six digital numbers. Sum of first and last number should be equals to eight. And constraint to generate unique numbers between nine, 99 to 100. And without inside operator generate the random values for the range 34 to 43. So try to solve this constraints. Okay. Thank you.